Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel. So today we're doing this 3D scanner setup with Tyflow that you can use to scan any 3D object you would like and create this kind of an effect. So I already have my box animated here to just move around. So this is my scanner and I have my object here that I'm scanning. That's all you need to start. Then we're gonna need a tie icon to emit the particles out of. So I'll just go under create, helpers, tie flow and create a tie icon. Click auto grid and just make that right on top of your scanner here. So we just need to link the tie icon to our scanner. So I'll just select the select and link, select the tie icon and just link it to this blue box over here. So now they're gonna move together. So now let's just do birth for 100 frames, so 0 to 100 for a total of, let's do per frame and 60 per frame is actually fine. And let's do position icon and pick our tie icon that we created. So now the particles are being born on top of the icon, but they're not being stuck to it. So we need to add an object bind operator and pick our scanner box here. And that's all you need to do. Now the particles are stuck to that box. So now we're basically trying to send the particles from the scanner, have them fly over to our object. And if they reach the object, they just stop. And then we'll just create some tie splines in between to create the scanner lines. So let's add a spawn operator, which will give birth to children of these parent particles. And let's add a position raycast operator here. For the icon, we can just click on none and select the tie icon that we created. And for the target object, I'm gonna select my Cybertruck over here. So I'll just say pick and select all of my Cybertruck parts. Connect that to the spawn. And now you should have some particles being born covering the object. As you can see, they're only being born because of the raycast race, it's almost as if this is emitting light, right? And only where the light hits is where the new particles are created. So the backside remains clean and we're only getting this scanner effect like we want. So I actually wanna turn these into blue spheres to get a nicer effect like what I have in this example here. So let's just add a shape operator. We can make it a 3D and let's set it to sphere low res. And under display, let's display it as geometry. So now we're giving birth to some blue spheres. That's perfect. So inside of your material editor, you can just create a new V-Ray light material and set the color to blue. And you can set the light strength just like 0.5. So you get these nice sort of lit up um, blue particles across the object and you can apply that material straight to tie flow. So next we want to add the scanner lines and for that we're going to use the spline paths. So I'll just add a spline paths operator here, say create new. And when you think about it, the blue particles that we created are the children of these parent particles on the scanner. So I'll just set this to parent. But as you can see, the tie splines don't die. They just keep accumulating on top of each other. So under the tie spline measure here, you can scroll down and set the maximum age to three frames so that they only live for three frames. So they're born and then they die. So this is very close to our final result already. You can just click on this little icon here so that they show up in the viewport. And let's set the radius to just something like 0.2. So very thin scanner lines, right? So I just want there to be more of these blue spheres across the object. But if I erase the amount of particles that are being born, I'm going to increase the number of scanner lines too. And I kind of like how many lines I have. I just want to increase the amount of particles on the object. So I'll just add another spawn operator here. And we can just hold shift and copy over the display operator and change the color to green just so we can differentiate and connect that to the spawn. In the spawn operator, I'll just set the offspring to like 20. And then you can scroll down to position, say parent shape surface, and let's set the offset to like 10 centimeters, right? So now we have all of these particles spread around but they're not sticking to the object anymore. I want them to spread, but I want them to stay stuck to the geo. So we can just add another object bind here and pick all of the Cybertruck parts again. So H, Cybertruck, select all that. So I think maybe the scale of the spheres is a bit too big. So back under shape, we can just set the scale here to 
75%. And as you can see in my example over here, the spheres on top of the object actually just slowly scale down and disappear over time. So to do that, we can just add a scale operator here. Let's set it to absolute and set the scale value to zero, which will effectively make them disappear. But we're just gonna set the interpolation value here to 0 0.025. So that's what I did in my example. So this interpolation basically means build up time, or this is how you can slow down the effect. So let's set the timing to continuous because it needs to continuously be scaled down and hold shift and copy it to this last event too because we want all of the particles to scale down. As I go forward, you can see that they're born and then they slowly get smaller, smaller, smaller until they reach scale zero and they disappear. So again, this is controlled with the interpolation value. The lower the interpolation value, the longer it will take for them to reach scale zero. So if I wanted them to reach scale zero much faster, I can just set this value to like 0.5. And as you can see with value of 0.5, they scale down and disappear almost immediately, which also might be pretty cool depending on what kind of a scanner effect you're going for, but I want them to stay around for a while. So I'll just lower this value again to 0 0.025. Don't forget to add a mesh operator if you wanna be able to see these blue spheres in the render. So I'll just add mesh operator, mesh operator. As sort of a final touch, we want to lower the opacity of the light material of the scanner lines so that they're additive. So if more of these lines cross each other, they get brighter on top of each other, right? To make it look like they're sort of transparent. So I'll just make another V-Ray light material, set the color to blue. And for the opacity, I wanna click on no map and select output, enable color map, and then you can just drag this down and it will lower the opacity of that material. So I'll just apply this to the tie splines and I'll just unhide my lights that I've prepared and my walls and enable the V-Ray IPR to see what this looks like. And here you go, it's all working beautifully. So I think these particles could be brighter. So I'll just go back here and set this back to one. And one last thing that I wanna fix, you can see we're getting these sort of gaps in the particles on the object after we added the object bind. I found that this is because of the sample so it's set to hybrid and you wanna set it to accurate. And then when it updates, you're gonna see the particles cover all of the area as they should. And here you go. So all of the gaps are now filled, right? So in my example here, I didn't do this. And so now I have these sort of holes in the particles. Um, but if you set it to accurate, it will actually fix that issue. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this, that you've learned a lot. We've covered the position raycast operator that I've never covered on this channel before. Very cool technique. If you liked it, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.